distinguished guests. It's a great privilege to be here in Kampala at the African Now Conference with my fellow colleagues and leaders of Africa, influential business actors, and important academ academics and expert on development. I am grateful to President Yuweri Museveni and the people of Uganda for the warm welcome and hospitality accorded to me and my delegation. I also congratulate the organizers of this conference, the African Strategic Leadership Com uh, Center, for making it a very successful event. The title of this conference, African Now, is unique because most analysis tends to focus on what, what Africa has been. While it is good to learn from the past, it is the present efforts, success, and lessons that inform the future and from which we can build on from the past. We must move forward with not just hope for the future, but confidence in our present endeavors. This is what President Mazzolini was referring when he spoke the, uh, of the need for transformation in our continent. I fully agree with his analysis that we should, that we should move from quantitative production to qualitative production. He also mentioned labor, labor safety standard to improve our quantitative production. My sister, Samia Sunuhu, the Vice President of Tanzania, also referred to the need for inclusive development and leadership, where women and youth play a key role in the continent progress. This was also the theme that Vice President William Ruto emphasized. It is now that we need, to, we, we need the leadership to catalyze Africa's socio-economic transformation. It's now that we need to forge a future that works for African youth and women. It is now that we need to understand the miti the, uh, and mitigate the cost of climate change and sustainable economic growth. It's now that we need to find local, national, and global solutions to common challenges such as trade and security and finally, it is now that we need to connect our economic future through digital and physical infrastructure to achieve an integrated, secure, and growing Africa. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I have had the privilege of attending different sessions in the conference and listen to many ideas, policies, and proposed actions, and I can sincerely say that I am hopeful that we can achieve our, co our continent aspirations if we strengthen our partnership. No challenge is insurmountable, no mountain too high, and no distance too far. If there is a common purpose and a determination to cement this on our part. African solidarity has always been based on meaningful collaboration, and I believe that we have the necessary institutions people, vision, and leadership to achieve the integrated, secure, and growing Africa that we can accelerate to achieve our development. In his innovation letter, to me, His Excellency Yuri Mzavini, it stated that he was a terminal Afro-optimist. And I wanted to let him know that we all share his love, commitment, and pride in our beautiful continent. However, we must also be realistic and accept that for Africa, and it is diverse people to fulfill their great potential and escape from the poverty trap and underdevelopment. We must collectively have very serious discussions and a continental strategy regarding economic transformation, investment, growth, as well as employment for our youth. Our continental experience informs us that our greatest economic assets and advantages, like our youth and natural resources, can often become a detrimental issue if we do not invest in them 
and manage them well. We can no longer afford this ill globalized world where every other continent is pulling together and getting ahead and we are already working to just catch up. Leadership and common responsibility are the key pillars of reform, change and progress. The integration, security and economic growth of Africa are the responsibility of each and every political and business leader as well as our citizen. In other words, we all need to be proactive in moving this beautiful rich, but also, but often challenging, content, co co uh, this continent forward. The era of waiting for the state to do everything is thankfully over. Governments, business leaders, and citizens must work together closely to create a new social co contra contract based on forging future that works for all people. We must become more engaged and innovative in the way we do business, politics, and benefits from continental and global partnership. We must impartially measure the impact of our policies and think together because together we are stronger in every way. Africa's opportunities are boundless. We have among the youngest population in the world. Valuable land and sea resources and historical tra tradition of partnership and solidarity. Moreover, because of technology and improving basic public services, such as education and health, Africa has development, Africa has an opportunity to leapfrog in many areas key to our, our common developments, including manufacturing, transportation, logistics, and the digital economy alongside traditional areas of strength like agriculture. Intra-Africa trade is simply a must if we are to prosper as a continent. We need to be able to make market and sell Africa made goods and services to ourselves first and foremost. The reality is that Africa is our, is our main market and where our, pro our, our, our producers and entrepreneurs have the most advantage and where we can maximize opportunities through supply chain activities and impact investing. More importantly, the initiation and development of continental free trade will transform the socio-economic future of Africa and its people with new opportunities, jobs, skills, and reverse the damaging brain drain. I am proud to announce that Somalia was one of the first signatories of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. However, to succeed in this objective, Africa must be better connected by road, rail, air, and sea. We need enormous investment in the infrastructure to connect our people to future continental and global opportunities. Alongside infrastructure, we must invest in key enablers and sustainers of economic growth. The enablers are competitive, economic policies and creation of continental-wide conducive investment environment which benefits all stakeholders, most importantly, the countries and their people. The question we must ask ourselves are, are Africans good goods and services able to move freely across borders? Is our financial sectors interconnected? Do we have the policies and effective governments to mitigate their potential risks? Do we have the skills and energy to produce on a large scale? Do we have the education and skills to ensure we sustain and benefit from economic growth? Do we have the me mechanism of uh, cooperation to strengthen our continental partnership for progress? Along these important questions, we must also seriously consider how to mitigate risks and mobilize institutional investors' capital for development as well as how best we use the international financial institutions in a joint across border projects. These valuable and well-resourced organizations must think innovatively 
and in the case of the least developed countries, many of which are on the African continent, be fragile sensitive. The sustainers, on the other hand, are investment and cooperation in all forms and production of valuable environment, which, pro which provides us all with life and opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to conclude my remarks simply by saying that, of course, Somalia has been through a lot of tough time for the last few years. As a result of that, a lot of our people end up in refugee camps in different parts of the world. One of the areas they came is here in Kampala, in Uganda, as well as in many other parts of Africa. However, I will tell you one thing for sure. When you are poor or homeless, that does not prevent you to be self-sufficient. And that's a lesson that everyone can learn from the Somali public and Somali people who left their country to overseas and to other countries. I want to give you one example. We have about 50,000 Somali refugees here in Uganda. I will tell you many of them are self-sufficient even though they came here, even though they came here as refugees, slowly they end up to be entrepreneurs. They started their own business. They integrated with Uganda people, of course with the help, with the help of the uh, president of Muzadin for his pan-Africanism ideology. As a result of that, many of them became very wealthy. It's not only here in Uganda, Kampala, Uganda, but also if you go to South Sudan, if you go to Kenya, even though, even if you go to South Africa, you will see a lot of Somalis who left their home as refugees, but ended up in those countries as a wealthy as we speak today. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it is it's a must we achieve a secure, integrated and developed Africa for our people. It is their rights and our duty. However, it's clear to me from our continental experience that we can achieve zero tension and no conflict to silence all guns, to, no, to create more jobs while growing our economies. As an African, we must finally turn potential into reality and transform our collective future. I thank you.